Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Hope you're doing great. We're doing another mixed tip video. This short video is going to explain how we use auxiliary submasters to help us control groups of instruments, get a quick focus on our mix, and be more creative and have a faster workflow. Hope you enjoy. So you can see here in this song, it's a Long Gone by Moguls of Mayhem coming out all streaming platforms sometime in September. We have quite a bit of tracks. Red are our drums, so there's a, quite a few of those. The dark red is our loops. Then we have some percussion and sound effects. Brown is basses. We have a DI and two different amps. Then it just, also a distorted bass, sorry. Then purple are guitars. And then we have yellow, which are our keys. And green are our vocals. So you can see there's a lot of vocals and a lot of background vocals in the session. So if we check out these vocals, these background vocals, there's no plugins at all on them. If we go up to our lead vocal, which is split out for verses and choruses, there's nothing on those either. We have so many sources that were recorded, possibly with the same singer or groups of singers on similar microphones and signal chains, we can process them together. So our lead vocal tracks, we may have a, a track for the verse, a track for the pre-chorus, a track for the chorus, and we have mono doubles that would go right underneath that. We have all of those routing to this lead vocal bus, and the processing is done as I would do individually on each of them with all these plugins. So I'm saving all this processing power rather than having six tracks spread out with this on it. Then I have my sidechain effect sends and my reverb and my delay sends all happening on this one. And these obviously can all be adjusted and automated. Then I have my lead vocal triples and quads. So if he did his double and it's underneath it in mono and he's blown, we're trying to make the choruses wider, we want to blow them up, he may sing a quad and a triple and those go left and right. Then background vocals. Pretty much in every session there's a background vocal that has some kind of part in the chorus that's pretty normal sounding that has similar processing to the lead. There may be a second one that plays against it which would have different processing. Maybe it's more staccato. In this case I have a shorter AMS reverb on those than the plate that I had on the lead. Then you'll have a couple of other options. There might be an answer vocal. Then there's usually a gang vocal or a shouting kind of sound on a, on a rock track and that might have some distortion. So that's why we have all of these here. And then this pretty much applies, if we look up, we'll go to our drums. So the drums, we have a kick drum. We have in and out mic, we have numerous samples. So there might be six kick tracks. So I can send them all to this one aux. I can send it to all the side chains I want or reverbs I want, and I can process them accordingly. In most cases, I'd have my outboard 1176 and outboard pull tech, but here the mix has been evolving and it's not really finished. So this is where we're at now. So normally on these, you'd see some outboard hardware gear. What's great about this is I'll have those inserts in there on my template usually, and then they're ready to go. So I can just send right to these. The same thing with the guitars, same thing with the keyboards. So we're gonna take it our look over here at our mix window. So you'll see all my aux subs are pretty much at zero with the exception of the bass auxes. So if these are moving or they're lower, I'll know there was an automation move. Now let's see why these are like that. So the bass subs is a little bit of a different animal because we have one bass submaster, which is pretty much the sound of the bass as it is. And this would probably have some analog processing on it. So what I usually do is I have two more and one of them is just the highs and the second one is just the lows. And this allows me to slide those up and down in different parts of the song to create more emotion and impact. So you can see once again in our mix window how we have all these aux submasters over here. So the beauty of this is they stay in our template and they have everything on them. And then we send the, the audio tracks to them. So if you've been working on your session and over here your audio tracks, you worked out this balance the way you like it, whatever it is, you can keep your balances and then you can just send them where they're supposed to go. Then if they need more processing, you can quickly do them on the individual audio channels. What I usually do is I phase align everything and then I put an SSL channel strip across all my audio and that can happen while we're tracking. So I'm getting closer to the mix, then I don't have to totally rebuild. And then all I have to do is send them to the outputs and then the outputs will go to these aux subs and that will feed my two bus and we're ready to mix. So use auxiliary submasters 
to control groups of instruments, speed up your workflow, make you mix better and faster. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support and we could use it. If you liked it, click the like button, hit the notification bell, and we can let you know when there's more content like this coming out. Please leave a comment, or if you have any questions, I'll be glad to get back to you. And if you have any creative ways that you use Aux Submasters, let us know. Thanks again. Happy mixing.